Hello and welcome to the Inu series of Trishti IAS. My name is Pooja Devedi. Today we are going to discuss about the winner Swante Tebo, Dr. Swante Tebo, who has got awarded the Nobel Prize in the field of medicine. From the perspective of GS Mains paper third, this is going to be of utmost importance, this particular topic apart from that, prelims, the fact related to Nobel Prizes and of course the other factual information whatever you will gather or collect in this segment. So without any further ado, let us look at our different topics that we are going to discuss today. From the news to Alfred Nobel and Nobel Prize plus what is the Nobel Prize in medicine, who is Dr. Swante Pebo, his Nobel winning work, what was the research, the process of garnering the research and overcoming certain challenges. What is the significance of this particular research and in the last of the segment, a question. Let us move ahead and talk about this news piece. Swante Pebo awarded Nobel Prize in Medicine, Mapping Neanderthal Genome. Genome is a set of genetic material, okay? So, set of genetic material, remember that. Genetic material, alright? Let us move ahead and talk about, first of all, the man behind the prize, that is Alfred Nobel. He was born on 21st October 1833 and died on 10 December 1896. He is famously known for inventing dynamite and he is a holder of 355 patents. By profession, he, is a, he was a chemist, inventor, engineer, entrepreneur, businessman and author. In his will, he left 31 million SEK, that is about $265 million as of today to fund the prizes. Now, why are we discussing this? Because from this funding only, the fund or the pool for distributing the Nobel Prize was gained. Okay, moving ahead, let us know something about him. He became very proficient in chemistry since his childhood and he wanted to become a writer as well, but his father, Emmanuel, did not want him to be so. So, he said to his son to move away and go to Paris laboratory of Theophile Pelouz, where he shared this space with Asanio Sobero, who was the first person to use nitroglycerin in 1846. So after that, when he went on to the world, to, towards different parts of the world, he learned something new. And when he went back to his family's factory that was in St. Petersburg, it was booming and that was of course thanks to the Crimean War. And when the war, war ended, now why the Crimean War is important over here? Because the factory used to develop military objects to supply to the Russian army. When war ended, the firm went into bankruptcy, okay? And what happened after then? Then Nobel along with his father, they started developing methods to produce nitroglycerin, okay? And in 1862, he began its manufacturing service at a small place outside Stockholm, Stockholm, Sweden. And what happened during that process? He lost his brother. And because of the production of this material, it was so. So Nobel thought that I have a goal of developing a safe nitroglycerin explosive and he first invented the blasting cap and then discovered a siliceous earth that by the name of Kieselger and Kieselger would stabilize nitroglycerin. This was his goal and then he made in the entire process the dynamite. Alright, then comes the next set in 1875 he created blasting gelatin. In 1887, ballistite, which is a nearly smokeless powder, especially suitable for propelling military projectiles. But he wasn't happy by the way his inventions were being used, the destruction that they were causing. So he was pretty disturbed by that. Then comes the time when he signed his third and last will on November 27, 1895, saying that a pool will be a pool of funds of whatever he has earned will be created after his death and prize will be distributed in different fields. We will talk about the fields as well from this particular pool. And it created a lot of controversy, not only in Sweden, but also everywhere else. His family was not happy with everything. The will said and also the executives he chose to execute his plan were also not happy. That means after his death, you can see the first Nobel could be awarded only in 1901. 
in different fields he talked about so physics chemistry physiology or medicine literature and peace were the fields so in 1968 sverige's rick's bank established the sverige's rick's bank prize in economic science because in the original list economic sciences were not included okay moving ahead let us talk about the nobel prize the nobel laureates are announced at the beginning of october each year like this uh, this year also it has been done and remember what is a laureate a laureate is a person according to greek mythology laurel means laurel wreath okay laurel wreath it is basically a crown made of twigs leaves and branches okay so in ancient greek mythology the god apollo is seen to wear laurel wreath and it was awarded to people who were victors not only in the field of athletics but also in the field of poetics so you see this is a kind of symbolic gesture to give a crown made of laurel, laurel wreath so whoever used to wear a laurel wreath was known as laureate okay and 10 december is the date that is the date on which alfred nobel died they received their prizes from the swedish king it has a nobel diploma a medal and a 10 million swedish crowns per prize okay so this nobel diploma is a beautifully constructed diploma many norwegian and swedish calligraphers write on it and a medal the medal is made of 18 karat gold which is plated with 24 karat gold and it if we talk about the prizes in physics chemistry medicine literature it has the face of alfred uh, nobel with of course his birth year and death year and the uh, medal actually is different a little different for the prizes in peace and economic sciences okay and all nobel prizes are awarded in stockholm sweden but the nobel peace prize it is awarded in oslo norway the reason for this is when alfred nobel was alive until 1905 sweden and norway used to have a similar monarch one monarch for both sweden and norway but when uh, when division took place the place is also got divided moving ahead let's talk about nobel prize in the field of medicine now this particular prize is awarded by the nobel assembly at karolinska institute in stockholm sweden and up until now 113 as of 2021 130 nobel prizes in physiology or medicine have been awarded since 1901 it was not awarded on nine occasions these are the many years the reason for this is as the will was written it also said that if in any year any work is not worthy of the prize it's not necessary to give the prize medicine prizes 113 laureates 225 certain times of course many times we see the prizes getting distributed as well prize getting distributed among more than one person awarded women 12 youngest laureate was of course at the age of 32 oldest is 87 in india india also got awarded in the field of medicine the nobel prize it was of course by har gobind khurana and this was the year 1968 along with marshall w nirenberg and robert w pole okay you have to tell me in the comment segment in which for what purposes medicine is fine but what was the research okay moving ahead let us talk about dr swante pebo he is actually a swedish geneticist he was born on 20th april 1955 he specialized in the field of evolutionary genetics that means how genes used to evolve we used to see that basically he was interested in his mother's field up until his father got the nobel prize in 1982 tell me the name of the father in the comment segment if his father also got awarded in the field of medicine in 1982 and after that he changed his field now he is one of the founders of paleogenetics paleogenetics is actually a field in which genes of fossils can be studied are studied and his work was in neanderthal genome okay we will talk about neanderthal as well and he was appointed the director of the department of genetics at the max planck institute for evolutionary anthropology in leipzig germany in 1997 where he further boosted his research he is also a professor at okinawa institute of science and technology japan moving ahead let us talk about the research his research was basically studying the genome of neanderthal and in the process he also got hold of denisovan so what are all these first of all let us understand 
His research attempts to answer questions about human evolution since our ancestors how we have evolved. The sequencing of the genome of Neanderthal is the main core of the entire activity. Discovering Denisovan, which is a previously unknown, which was a previously unknown hominin. A hominin is basically a member of the current human species, but hominins have gone extinct. Okay, and the conclusion was that during the study is that gene transfer had occurred. That means inbreeding was taking place, gene flow was taking place. from now extinct hominins to homo sapiens following the migration out of africa around 70000 years ago so this was the conclusion and the ancient gene flow has significant physiological relevance for present day humans we will talk about the significance as well but here we will understand many other things so the research is uh, research has certain challenges first what were the challenges that over time dna which consists all the information about our genetics it gets degraded and becomes chemically modified and it whatever could be present in the fossils because fossils are so many years old whatever could be there only trace amounts of their dna would have been left okay and what happens in that that dna tends to degrade chemically it degrades itself or it modifies so what did pebo thought dr pebo thought let's talk about let's research on mitochondrial dna mitochondria is a membrane bound cell organelle which is also known as the power house of the cell it has its own set of chromosomes and generally the mitochondria or my or after that mitochondrial dna generally we get it from our mother so mitochondrial dna was seen to be better to be studied for if we compare it from nuclear dna because uh, of course it had certain values what were the values so mitochondria is an organelle inside the cell that is its own dna it is present in thousands of copies although the dna fragments are small but it is present in thousands of copies and that increases the chance of successful gene sequencing okay and then the research also said that uh, sequencing of the part of mitochondria could help them trace what were the genetic variation from present day humans so they sequenced a part of the mitochondrial dna from a 40000 year old bone and a comparison of this with com contemporary humans and chimpanzees were made and this research showed that neanderthals were genetically different and distinct and in 2010 he published the first neanderthal genome sequence when he was given a chance to serve in university of at, of munich he started developing his research and a period of time went in 2010 he drafted his paper okay and let's talk about neanderthal neanderthal is basically the closest closest relative of the present day human species they lived in europe and west asia southern siberia and middle east were their expanse and they disappeared around 30000 years ago so just imagine getting a fossil so old and then understanding its dna moving ahead now denisova as i told you it was uh, discovered by dr pebo in 2008 dna from an exceptionally well preserved 40000 year old bone was taken out and that was done from denisova cave in siberia and this dna sequence turned out to be unique very different from the present day humans and the previously unknown hominin denisova came into the picture moving ahead let's talk about the sequences so the dna sequences from neanderthal were more similar to the contemporary humans which who originated from europe and asia but they were not as as similar to the contemporary humans originating from africa that means there was a difference and it suggested interbreeding between neanderthal and homo sapiens okay so you see that neanderthals and homo sapiens their genetic makeup was different as we Uh, of course grow from homo sapiens but whenever they existed in concurrence they used interbreeding process and that is why how we evolved so from the scientific perspective we have to understand that evolutionary biology helps us to understand if we study the fossil dna or the well preserved dna then we can understand how our immune responses work in case any infection occurs so we see that currently our immune response is similar to any infection that neanderthals had and if we talk about the denisova 
if we talk about denisovan they used to thrive in at such high altitudes their dna their dna uh, you can say fragments of their dna is present in the tibetans so this is what evolutionary biology and the study and research is giving us moving ahead let us talk about the process the process was the team analyzed 21 neanderthal bones from vindija caves in croatia vindija is present in croatia okay and then bone powder was taken out and three bones were selected for further analysis to which nine dna extracts were prepared and dna and microbial contamination if any were ruled out were taken away and five present day human genomes from different regions were taken place uh, were taken so one sand from southern africa one yoruba from west africa one papua new guinean and one han chinese and one french from western europe and these were analyzed against neanderthal genome that were derived from the experiment and hence it was concluded that how similar or different they were moving ahead there were divergences of course and the divergence of the neanderthal genome to the human reference genome was greater than for than for any other of the present day human genome that has been analyzed so there was a distinct distinction you can see neanderthals they moved from their origin to different areas in west europe denisovan to india and of course east asia and you see homo sapiens how they grew from africa okay moving ahead let us talk more of it significance as i told you to understand how infections work as we have similar as of neanderthals the immune response denisovans genetics are present in tibetans and other significance as we see the conceptual breakthrough of, is of paramount importance in understanding human evolution in the same manner how can we ev evolve in the field of biology and medicine as well it is also the technology that has been used in the entire process what technology has been used this is also very important because this would give it a renewed interest in the field and a new field has evolved out of it it will help in furthering the recognition of evolutionary biology and paleo paleo genomics so it is very important that continuous evolution in this field also occurs otherwise it will become stagnant and whatever we need to know about the human body will also be a question now the significance other significance is that the neanderthal genome allows researchers to identify features that are unique to present the humans and relative to other hominins as well was there any interbreeding if there is any interbreeding uh, what were the genetics that are dominant what were the genes that are dominant what genes beca became suppressed so all this will be very important in the future to know now let's look at the question which of the following fields was not originally a part of the nobel prize group medicine economics peace or literature you have to answer this let me take the names of those who have answered my last question correctly okay so it was 2019 in my last segment khushi masood brahma dhanpreet tanu jalag jalajakshi sandeep anuj hariyom tushita also pallavi jangir chauhan chintan faizlu malana rohit rupal fg mari then sami kumar also simran has answered it correctly answer this question as well i will take your names in the next segment thank you so much for watching